Hello and welcome to What's Next Wall Street. I'm Georgia Alfredes. And I'm Dave Matthews. And this is a show about stocks, blockchain, NFTs, and the decentralized Web3 world around us. Yeah, all that good stuff. So listen, I've got details on all the hot new trending products that everybody's talking about using and investing in. And this week, I'm talking OPEC, oil, and daddies. Relax, not that kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're also going to show you the first and the next trillion dollar companies. Ooh. And we'll take a peek into drops at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Okay, cool. We got Greg Krause, lead instructor at OptionsPlayers.com as our expert. Greg charts a lot of these companies and those chart indicators can show you where a particular stock is headed so that it's easier for you to target investment potential. So what Greg does is combine technical analysis with fundamental knowledge. Our goal in this is to help you become a more informed consumer and trader with a tailored plan of action so that you can stay up to speed with what's next on Wall Street and keep stacking your gains. Yep, easy to get in touch with us. All you gotta do is email us at www.optionsplayers.com. You can hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street with your questions. We can also direct you to instructors and experts over at optionsplayers.com who dig into trading fundamentals. You can watch this episode of, on the Options Players YouTube channel or listen to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. So we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and uh, FAA Director Stephen Dixon asked both Verizon and AT&T to delay the start of C-band 5G service for a couple of weeks because, well, actually for longer than that, because they're concerned about the technology interfering with aircraft, electronics, and disrupting flights. But both companies are like, nah. 5G is not being delayed. However, uh, the two telecom giants are bending a little bit. They say they're not going to deploy 5G around airports for, what, another six months, and that that proposed exclusion zone works just fine in France. So, s'il vous plaît. That's all <laughs> oui, oui. Speaking <laughs> of telecom giants, it's the end of an era for BlackBerry. Mm. Well, kind of. BlackBerry phones not running the Android operating system are about to stop working. Support from the company was cut this week for all the BlackBerry phones using the original operating system. Those phones can no longer use data, make phone calls, send text messages, or basically just go online. Hey, Georgia, speaking of that, you didn't respond to my BBM message for that sick party on New Year's Eve. Ain't nobody trying to go to your little stupid rave, boy. And Dave, <laughs> I don't even have a BlackBerry. Nobody does. But here is the latest from Apple, the company that basically put the nail in the coffin for BlackBerry. Apple has become a triple unicorn. It's the first company to be worth $3 trillion. Um, did you just make that up? Like you mean a thriptocorn? Talk about me making up stuff. You know what? You definitely just made that up. And by the by, I look for these terms in the dictionary at the end of the year. We will take full credit for them. Okay. <laughs> so they were just a trillion with one yeah. dollar company back yeah. in 2018 when the shares were around $200. Okay. Now they're trading around 180 bucks, but they had stock buybacks. So of those 16 billion outstanding shares, do you know that more than half are held by institutional investors? Mm. Now they say that the current increase is due to them managing their supply chain, which I think is a slippery slope even for them. Now think about it. They didn't discount their iPhones or their iPad at all during the holidays, but some carriers did. But that was tied to subscription services, which are overpriced in the U.S. anyway. Oh, and those carriers discontinued those iPad rebates at the end of 2021. Why? Because consumers really weren't getting those promised discounts in many cases. You know, that's why I use prepaid cellular services, but that's for another show. The real thing that blows me away is that their AirPod business sold 90 million units during the last uh -huh. quarter. That's right. 90 million wireless headphones that you're probably going to lose. Dave. Doesn't everybody already pretty much have everything Apple they could ever use? Like, who doesn't already have Apple headphones? I mean, my seven-year-old and I have the Beats version. There's literally nothing more Apple that I could buy. Meanwhile, other companies on track to hit the trillion-dollar mark include one of our favorite companies. We're always talking about Tesla and also everybody's least favorite, Comcast. NVIDIA and Facebook are also expected to join the trillion-dollar club in the near future. Speaking of the future... I plan on staying as healthy and as youthful looking as I can. Thanks to OneSkin, 
I might actually be able to do that. I might be able to turn back the clock, literally. So one skin is a daily moisturizer scientifically proven to reduce the skin's biological age. I mean, I'm 72 and Dave's 80, so we have that. Basically. No, honestly, most people wouldn't believe how old we are when we tell them, and that's not just because black doesn't crack. Um, and I'm not telling my age right now or yours, you're welcome. But I take the health of my skin very seriously. And with one skin, my skin doesn't just look younger, in my opinion. It feels younger. It feels more hydrated. It feels more firm. So Now, their founders are three female doctors, and they utilize the magic of peptides inside the lotion to create a product made from all natural ingredients to target what drives aging at a cellular level. Now, with your skin being your largest organ, this product is an investment that can take your best features forward. Okay, that was cute. But here's the deal. You can subscribe and you don't have to worry about running out. It's a lifesaver. Or maybe I should say skin saver. We're good at this, man. So listen, visit oneskin.co slash WNWS uh, for 15% off your first purchase. That's O-N-E-S-K-I-N dot C-O slash WNWS and use code WNWS for 15% off your first purchase. You're welcome. So this is the part of the show where we get to hear from you. You can always hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street, or feel free to email us at wnwadoptionsplayers.com. Email number one comes to us from Nick in Phoenix, Arizona. I used to live there too. I lived everywhere. I lived in Scottsdale. It was so fun. Okay. So Nick asks, what is mean reversion and when do you think it's going to come into play? Okay. Sounds like a great question. Greg, what is mean reversion? So mean reversion... Uh, what it really means is let's break it down. Mean is just average, right? Uh, if you remember back probably in elementary school, maybe junior high, they talked about the MMMR, which was your median mode mean, and range. No, I, I don't well, remember anything from math. So don't even ask crazy questions. <laughs> <laughs> so and probability statistics, and uh, you're going to use the MMMR. Well, mean is just the average. So if you add all of them up and then divide it by however many it was, that's the mean average. Now reversion, uh, I guess in the, the term that we're looking for, it means to return to a previous state, right? Or a point. Uh, so you're returning to the average, simply put. All right. So it's exactly what it says. It just, they made it sound nerdy. All right. So to return to the average, uh, now, there was actually a rap song on MMR too. Go look it up. All right. I taught math. So sorry. All right. So, <laughs> okay, fine. I'm so, going to look it up too. <laughs> um, most people actually use it for like a moving average. And this is retail investors. So if you look at say a 20 M, uh, moving average or a Bollinger band or something like that, how it moves up and down around there and goes back to that line every time it touches the line, it's reverting back to the mean. Now we use this completely different as professionals. We're not looking so much as at a moving average as we look at maybe way more reversion to the mean. You have um, correlation to other stocks for pairs trading. Um, you have the VWAP, so the returning to the VWAP. Um, one of the biggest ones is uh, your P ratio, right? So your uh, profit to earnings ratio. Um, so Apple, just say Apple has an average of, of 27%. And now it's at 50%. We think sooner or later, it will return back to that 27%. So we can guesstimate what the future uh, market cap will be of that company. Uh, now, there are other things you can do to do this. I personally use it in options. So if you talk about invol uh, volatility or implied volatility, uh, we have something called IV rank. So the average would be 50%, okay? Uh, so anything at 50% is the average. Anything that goes above 50%, so if IV rank is a 90%, that means that in theory that those are overpriced, okay? So we want to sell those options or get a credit spread instead of buying or getting a debit spread. And now vice versa, if it's below 50%, we want to buy the options 
uh, rather than uh, selling them. And this is because uh, Vega and options. So uh, as implied volatility goes up, the price of the option goes up. Um, so if it's already really high, we expect implied volatility to go down, which would reduce the price of the option. So buying it might not be your best bet. Using a credit spread or selling it would often provide a better edge to the market. So that's how we beat the casino. I like okay. it. Great <laughs> analogy. Now, so this, you know, we talk about the top of the show, watching the fundamentals of stocks, and that's what's Greg talking about, the fundamentals there. So the next one comes from Dave in Plano, Texas. Oh, hey, hey Dave. What's up? You? <laughs> and he asks, after all the Robinhood li liquidity issues and fines behind them, is it a good opportunity to go long since the stock has now settled at 50% from its all-time high? That's a great question, Dave. We have a lot in common. And let's a see lot. what Greg has to say quickly about the Robinhood stock. Has it settled down, Greg? Is it time to buy after the initial volatility when they went public? Uh, actually, I just looked at the chart just, uh, a, just a minute ago. And there's no signs technically that it's going to stop. It hasn't like stop started what? going up. It keeps just posting new lows. Uh, and it was high at like 85. Now it's down about 15. That's just crazy. And it still has a market cap of 13 billion. Put that in perspective. At some point it was worth 80 billion. Uh, yeah, it was never really worth that, but some idiots purchased it to make it worth that much. So what I right, read was the <laughs> there were not a billion dollars put in by VCs to handle the meme stock issues they got into, but perhaps the VCs put three billion in to cover the payouts from the meme stock. Now, in this regard, Robinhood was kind of being used as like the, the same kind of a, a payout that an option would. All right. Um, I don't, in, in sense, who are these people putting it in? Um, because let's just, no good investor is using Robin hood. I'm just going to say that if you use what Robin hood <laughs> and you think you're a good investor, you're not because you chose that. All right. So the analogy <laughs> here is if, if you're on the internet through AOL, basically <laughs> you're yeah. Right. So, but look, they did make it gamified. They put, uh, emojis and oh, glitter. Yeah and uh, rainbows, and you can earn fractional shares of stock. They really tried to make it the, the easy way to understand investing. So doesn't there have to be an audience for that? Obviously, you take it to a whole new level, but... Well, I don't think it's investing, right? So what I think Robinhood really messed up, and they didn't mess up. They did the right thing for making money on personally, but where they let down their users is it's not investing. The people in Robinhood aren't purchasing something and just holding it or buying SPY. They're out there trying to buy GameStop, buy this, buy AMC, sell it the next day, buy this, get margins. That's not investing, that's trading. All right. And you, there's a saying that, you know, 95 people are going to fail out of 100 that trade. It's simple. All 95 of those have Robinhood. <laughs> but let's just say this. I mean, Robinhood did get people who would never have gotten into trading and investing into it. So especially younger people, you know, investing was like an older person's game. You know, if we can end yeah, an older true. man's game. I mean, that's that's what I said. They made a game out of it. Like you said, it's like <laughs> slot machines. Uh, but when it comes back around, you got in and now you're taking margins and doing all this. I think it's really going to come down to hurt Robin Hood later because offering all this margin to individuals that are trading, sooner or later, they're, they're going to lose when the big boys cut them off. Um, and you can't say, oh, even if you're the best, you might get something to happen like with GameStop and they can't even let you out or let you purchase more. Uh, so, And that's okay. what I was saying. That's it's, why the investors had to come in just so people could get out of those yeah. trades. Now, one of the things that they're doing for the revenue is to sell trading information to data collectors. So that means if a lot of people buy a meme stock, they'll let other trades, uh, they'll hold back those trades. Or Greg, what's the story on yeah, this? And so it's order flow is what they're selling. All right. So basically, think about it. First refusal. 
right? When you want to purchase something, say, hey, when you, whenever you get art, I get the first right to buy that. Well, that's basically what they do. They have these individuals that want to purchase these stocks for a fund or an individual. They say, hey, Robin Hood, we want these funds. Let us know when you get them and, and they purchase them. Sometimes it's not very beneficial to the individual purchasing or, or selling them, but um, that's what really what Congress and everybody's going after is purchasing the order flow. But it's not just Robin Hood. Just Google which, which ones actually use uh, order flow, sell order flow. Almost all of them do, okay? All your E-Trade, all of them. But the big part of them is, is they're not selling it like Robinhood. Robinhood is making all the revenue through that. While the other ones may sell some, um, it's, it's kind of become clear that while they sell orders, they're still giving their uh, users the best price possible, while Robinhood might not be. And that practice is illegal in Europe, but legal in the U.S. So that's what Greg said is going to, uh, to be some future legislation probably on that. So we'll have to see how Robinhood is going to have their new revenue stream for the future if that legislation comes into play. Hey, so if you have a question, we can answer it or we can find someone else who can. So hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street or email us at WNW at optionsplayers.com with your questions. All right, Georgia. So this week was going to be my annual nerd mecca to <laughs> Vegas, except for last year. And turns out this year, too, due mm -hmm. to concerns of the rapid spread of the Omicron variant. Let's hope this is the variant that turns the virus from pandemic to endemic. Well, I wasn't the only one who bailed on this, though. As many large corporations pulled out of CES, even when the organization stated that they're excited to return home to Las Vegas for a physical event, still... Over 2,200 companies were there in person. So let's take a look at the exciting things that were announced. Okay. Sony. Um, Georgia, do you remember when they were relevant? Aw. <laughs> well, they were there showing their cars. That's right, cars. Cars? Okay. Now, these debuted in 2019 when I was there, and their follow-up SUV came with an official announcement of their mobility automotive platform. Their debut of these vehicles is time to be just before Apple leave formally announces their super secret, mm. although not too secret, automotive platform. Maybe this will be Sony's chance to leapfrog the company that took away their Walkman and camcorder steam. Right. Sony also announced that they have a second generation virtual reality headset, which ties into their PS5 and is easier to set up with one cable. And that has higher resolution than their first generation wearable, which came out years ago for the PS4. Speaking of virtual reality, Meta, owners of Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, pulled out of the show, but we can only assume that they were going to show their latest Oculus face coverings. Now, the Oculus app was the number one downloaded app in the iTunes store for Christmas Day and actually Christmas Eve, too. So many people are buying them, but many parents are upset that you need a Facebook account to set them up, which limits users to 13 of age or higher. And once you get into the... The apps, there's no parental control. Right. So any app on the platform is able to be installed on the devices. Yeah, they got to fix that. Now, Samsung, they announced that their NF TVs would show NFTs. I guess you'd call that an NFTV. I like it. Um, it's the first screen, not the first screen to do this, but they did state that you could show off your digital art in the same lighting that the original artist depicted it to be shown. Okay. Whatever that means. No yeah. demos were made. So I'm not sure how they're going to pull that lighting metadata off, but that's what metadata is for now, isn't it? Now, one more cool feature is that the remote controls also charge via solar cells on the back or, get this, from stray Wi-Fi signals. Oh, my gosh. Now, the remote doesn't have a battery, just capacitors, which are way easier to charge with this type of harvesting. Still, I got to see how that works. Now, they also announced integration with GeForce, now, that's gaming built right into the TV sets for the cloud. Very cool. Now, in the past, we've talked about the Mercedes EQS. Yeah. And now the EQXX, see what they did there. Right. That concept debuted as the most aerodynamic, efficient vehicle on the market, beating the Lucid Motors numbers by a fraction. This has a drag coefficient of 0.17 compared to the EQS's 0.20 and Lucid's 0.21. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, it cuts through the air better than a Formula One car. 
and it gets more than 600 miles per gallon gas equivalent. Whoa, when is that thing coming out? Well, we don't know yet. And the okay. key to the mileage that they're getting is their new batteries. They're made from a high silicon anode, which is bonded to the lower panel of the chassis. So they're 50% smaller and 30% lighter than those found in their last prototype car, the EQS. This means the total mass of this concept car, the new one, is 3,800 pounds, and it's about 1,600 pounds less than the larger car we showed last year. Now, no word, Georgia, on when these vehicles are coming to market, okay. but Mercedes claims many of the manufacturing techniques needed to create these cars are implemented on today's vehicles. Oh, and the seats and door poles are made from cactus and mushroom fibers, which are fully sustainable versus leather, which... I believe smells better. Okay. But I mean, I hope those aren't the little, the little, uh, needles aren't sticking up. Yeah, when you say cactus, cactus I'm like the seats are made the, of cactus. It's the, the cactus fiber and the mushroom fiber. Uh, but what things and their stocks can you buy in the near future coming from the chip makers? Well, Intel's latest 12th gen processors have cores that will be tweaked for either economy, low voltage, or high power okay. in an effort to get more use from your laptop when it's in batteries and make it also run cooler. Intel also showcased their Mobileye autonomous driving fifth generation IQ chips where they have shipped 100 million chips since their debut. Think about it. Honda, Audi, BMW, and VW, they're all customers of these devices, which will receive over-the-air updates towards autonomous driving, just like Uncle Tesla does. Mm -hmm. AMD has gaming-focused graphics cards that will be available, they say, at the end of this month, starting under 200 bucks and work their way up to 500 Plus, their stock is up 56% oh over the last year. So remember, you may want to spend some of your hard-earned cash on shares if you believe in the product as well. Finally, NVIDIA announced their $2,500 gaming laptop that's available in February. Or if you've already got a fast PC, their $300 video card will do hardware-based ray tracing, something that's extremely unique at that price point. So Georgia... We've got a lot of new computer oh stuff gosh, coming on the so pipeline. Much, so much. It's shipping a lot earlier in the year from when it's normally That's, announced. It okay. takes usually months to come to market. Does this mean supply chains are fixed? Well, a new gauge from the Federal Reserve released today shows that global supply chain pressures may have peaked. The Global Supply Chain Pressure Index is a metric to document supply chain disruptions. Now, the NY Fed team says that while supply chain disruptions are indeed historically high, they may have peaked and may start to moderate somewhere going forward. Good. So if you like the stuff, you can buy the stocks today and hope you make some returns on them while you wait for the products to ship and not get stuck in a canal or something. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Dave, so OPEC is playing down the impact of Omicron, claiming it'll be mild and short-lived, uh, hopefully, with one OPEC delegate claiming the storm is over. We can only hope. Uh, with that in mind, OPEC and its allies plan to pump more oil into the world economy, raising their production by an additional 400,000 barrels a day next month and each month afterward until production reaches pre-pandemic levels. Now, meanwhile, the tree-loving hippie in me is waiting for a time in which we don't need oil. I know, don't start. I know, we need oil for furniture, we need oil for clothes and insulation, plastics, et cetera, et cetera. But now but we can use cactus. I know, right? That's true, <laughs> but a girl can dream, and really I just did that so that I could have a really good segue into a really cool electric car segment, okay? So listen. Okay, how about a car that can tell you when you've had too much to drink? This is revolutionary, a car that prevents drunk driving. There's technology out there that can make this happen, and soon. I'm talking built-in breathalyzers. Okay, honestly, I actually knew a guy who had that installed in his car. He literally had to blow into a tube in order to drive, but that was in a previous life, and this is different, so carry on. Uh, this technology involves sensors that look for traces of alcohol, and if the car determines that a driver's blood alcohol content is too high, the car won't move. And how about this? A touch-based sensor. DADS, D-A-D-S-S, -S, that stands for Driver Alcohol Detection System for, safely, for Safety. They're working on technology that can detect the alcohol content of a driver's fingertips. Meanwhile, Volvo is using cameras mounted on the steering column, which can determine if you're looking at the road or if you're distracted. Now, this sounds like sci-fi stuff, I know, but sources say they're going to be producing these in the next few years. You know what I want? I want something like a ruler 
that just slaps my kids' hands if they start using their phones or fiddling with the radio while driving. Then it'll be just like mommy's right there in the car with them, right? Like too much. <laughs> and Volvo will do it first because they're the kings of safety. That's so, right. Hey, we want to thank lead instructor at Options Players, Greg Krause, for being here with us today. That's right. Remember, if you've got questions, we can try to help you answer them. And we would love to hear from you. So email us at www.optionsplayers.com. Hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street. If you're watching this on YouTube, comment. You can, can, of course, watch episodes of What's Next Wall Street on the Options Players YouTube page or listen on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Dave Matthews. And I'm George Alfredes. See you next time on What's Next Wall Street. Make sure that you share the show with a friend. Make sure you comment. You can actually ask questions anytime. We'll answer them. And if we can't, we'll ask Greg.